Hey guys, how are you going? So in today's video, I'll be giving you an introduction to JSTOC and basically just showing you how to use it. So if you're not too sure what JSTOC is, essentially it provides you with a way to document your JavaScript code and it can also be exported to HTML, but you don't need to do that. That's completely an optional step. Um, but it also integrates really well with text editors and IDEs such as Visual Studio Code. And after watching this video, if you want more information on JSTOC, definitely check out jstoc.app uh, for some further documentation. But anyway, let's just dive right into how to actually use JSDoc. So let's go inside the text editor right here. I've got this main.js file. So now let's actually create a function in which we'll be documenting using JSDoc. So let's make a new function here and call this function create person. As the name implies, this function is going to be creating a person. So it's going to be accepting a name, an age, and also another parameter called is developer. Uh, basically, just a boolean to say, is this person a developer? This function is going to be returning an object with three properties, of course. It's going to be name as being name, age as being age, and is developer as being is developer. So uh, quite a straightforward function, okay? And obviously, by looking at this function, you may notice that, or you might assume that the name parameter is going to be of type string, the age is going to be a number, and is developer is going to be a Boolean. And that is obviously quite acceptable to assume given uh, the simple nature of this function. However, if you have larger functions, then it can be hard to determine or figure out uh, what it actually does and what these parameters types are and also what the function returns. So that is what JSTOC is for. I definitely recommend you still document your simple functions. However, it definitely comes in handy more with larger functions. So let's go up here now before this function and document it using JSDoc. So um, in most text editors, or at least with an extension installed for JSDoc, you can simply put forward slash and put two asterisks like this as we can see here, that is a snippet for a JS doc comment in Visual Studio Code. If I press enter, it's going to generate for me the JS doc comment. Uh, for now, let's just not worry about this parameters part. But I do want to say that if that didn't work for you, try installing a JS doc extension. Or if that didn't work, uh, it is quite straightforward to simply just write out this syntax right here. You simply put the forward slash two asterisks. Then on a new line, you put a space and an asterisk. So um, once you have this uh, this sort of syntax ready for your comment. Um, to describe the function create person, we're going to be doing it up here. So we're going to say, for example, this function will accept details uh, about a person um, and create an object for them. So that right there is going to be your function description. Again, for this simple function, this is quite useless, but of course, larger functions, it's going to be a lot more helpful. So that is where you put your function description uh, when it comes to JS doc. So now that's quite straightforward. Uh, moving on to the parameters here. Uh, this right here, line five, this is how to specify a type uh, name and description for a parameter. So in this case right here, it has grabbed the name name and has put it right here. So essentially you say at param and then inside here within curly braces, you put the type of the uh, parameter then followed by the actual name inside here. So for the parameter type, we're going to say uh, in this case here, it's going to be a string. So we simply put string right there. Previously, when it was an asterisk, this right here basically just means that the parameter could be anything, of course, by putting string, it means that the parameter is supposed to be a string. Okay, we can also go inside here or after this, and we can describe the parameter. For example, we can say the person's uh, full name. Okay, and we can do the same thing down here, we're going to say number for age, and we can say the person's age. And for is developer, we're going to obviously just pass in here boolean, and we're going to say whether or not the person is a developer. Okay, 
And that is basically how to specify your types and your descriptions for your parameters. So now, um, if you go, uh, if you go, sorry, if you go down here now, um, and you actually try and use your function, for example, we can say create person. We can see on the right there, uh, Visual Studio Code has picked up the JS doc, and it is telling us right here the uh, uh, the descriptions of the parameters, and it's also telling us the function description, and it's also telling us the types of the parameters which have been specified up here. We can see name as being string, age, number, and is developer as being boolean. So obviously we can see how we can take advantage of um, JS doc in order to uh, you know, see uh, what the types are when we are working on the JS code, okay? Anyway, let's go down here now, and we're gonna also go inside the function, and we're gonna uh, try and write out name. As we can see here, again on the right side, we can see it knows it's a string, which means if I say dot, we get all of the methods for the string. And this is just the feature of VS Code because it knows how to read JS doc. And we can see once again how it can be useful in the functions. Okay, uh, let's move on now to another another annotation, and that is going to be for the return type. So down here, we're going to say at returns, and we're going to say a uh, very similar syntax. We're going to say in curly braces, we're going to say object just like this, and we're going to say as a description the person object. So uh, once again, quite straightforward. It's going to be your type inside here, followed by a description. Also, if you don't want to use uh, this style for descriptions, you can also put a dash, and that is perfectly fine. Okay, so now we have this well-documented function. Let's export this to HTML. So obviously, you don't need to export to HTML to take advantage of uh, JSDoc. However, um, it may it may be something to know. So anyway, let's go inside here now and open the terminal, and we're going to be um, installing JSDoc on my system. So in order to do this using uh, npm, you simply say uh, npm install and then JSDoc, but I am going to be supplying here uh, the dash g global flag. So if you're starting to use JSDoc um, or you're just testing, uh, global is perfectly fine, uh, but you may want to instead install locally in your project. Anyway, by pressing enter here, it's going to install JSDoc on your system. And then uh, you may need to restart your terminal or your text editor for the next step, but to export this to HTML, you simply say JSDoc and then provide uh, the uh, name of your file, in this case main.js. Pressing enter here is going to generate an HTML document inside the out directory right here. And if I was to go to that file inside the text editor, so forward slash out, we can see right here we get um, a nicely formatted HTML file that describes the uh, documentation which we just wrote. If I was to go on the right here, we can press on create person under the global heading because of course this function right here is global, okay? So under this heading right here, create person, we can see right there we get all the documentation which we just wrote in a nice and formatted uh, manner. Okay, we get the function description, the parameter list, description, etc., the source, and the return type. So definitely useful uh, for reference, and if you want to, uh, you know, uh, maintain a larger code base. But anyway, let's go back inside here now and explore uh, just a couple more features of JSDoc and uh, something, uh, something which may be useful uh, to you. So let's go down here now and create a new class uh, called person. And this class right here is going to uh, simply take in the same parameters for a constructor. You can say constructor and take in these parameters right here. I'm just going to copy the JSDoc from above. So all of this stuff right here and paste it just down here, okay? And I'm gonna be changing uh, just uh, the description to be creates a person, okay? And inside here, I'm gonna say this.name equal to name, this.age equal to age, and this.isDeveloper equal to isDeveloper. So the reason why I made a class is because I'm gonna be showing you how classes work. They work in a very similar uh, fashion in JSTOC uh, when it comes to the types. Uh, so this means that if I was to uh, make a new function uh, down here now called print details about a person, okay? We can say person just like this, and we can say uh, in the JSDOC, we can say param person, 
we can say this right here is going to be accepting a type of person with the capital P to refer to this person right here, the class. Okay, which means that um, I'll just say up here, output details about a person. Okay, inside here we can say console.log and I can say for example, I might just copy and paste this bit right here. Okay, so I can say console log and I can say person.name, age, is developer, etc. Is this particular, um, you know, uh, years old? Okay, but I also want to show you here that now if I say person dot, we get all of the properties of the person right here because the JS doc has obviously described that this is a person, so it knows to display these particular parameters. So definitely, once again, just showing how useful it's going to be in your code. Okay. Uh, so now anyway, let's just go down here now and uh, rerun the JS doc main JS and see the output. So now in the browser, refresh and we get here uh, classes, a uh, new heading. Inside here we get the person, the same sort of thing. And also down here, of course, print details, a uh, very similar thing. Also in the type section, you press on this and it goes to the actual person. So definitely uh, really interesting and useful um, right there. Um, but I also do want to show you one more thing and that is going to be for arrays. So let's go back inside here and make a new function once again and this function is going to be called get numbers and basically this function is going to be returning a bunch of numbers. So we can say return and then 10, 80, 130 and 150. So now of course we are returning an array of numbers. So you may have guessed that already with JSTOCK you can specify uh, the return type and you can say um, an array of a particular type. So let's just say right here gives you numbers as the description and inside the param, so at param, and we're going to say right here, uh, so you know what, my mistake, it needs to be at return. So at returns, we're going to say inside here curly braces and we're going to say number and then use square brackets just like that and basically it's just saying this function is going to return you an array of number. So now if I was to say down here const uh, numbers is equal to get numbers just like this and now if I was to say for you know const n of numbers we can see here if I do console.log n we can see right there uh, VS Code knows it is a number we can see number right there if I say dot once again all of the methods related to only a number so once again that is how useful it's going to be in your code I especially like the array one because typically if you just say returns array you won't know the type of the array and typically your arrays are of a single type I might just save this here and once again run JS talk one last time and this is the result inside the browser. We can see right here we get an array of number as the return type. And that is uh, an introduction to JSTOC and of course how to use it. Uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.